Okay, hello, my name is Payne Champ, and this presentation is on an artificial blood vessel. So the artificial blood vessel that was chosen for this um, presentation was the radial artery. So arteries are vessels that carry blood-rich oxygen from a person's heart to the rest of their body's organs and tissues. The radial artery is located in the forearm, and it, its main job is to supply oxygen to the arm and hand, or oxygenated blood. And um, so the location of this artery, it, it receives a lot of movement. So this is going to be essential in determining the right property or, or right material for our simulations and stuff like that. So criteria. So the lengths of the artery that we are going to be simulating are one millimeter, 10 millimeter and 100 millimeter. So the diameter of the um, artery is going to is 2.6 millimeters. And this is the radial artery and its thickness is one point or point one seven seven millimeters and this is in the right hand there's actually different uh, material thicknesses or thicknesses of the radial artery in each arm so the blood flow rate through the radial artery is um, two times ten to the neg negative six millimeters cubed per second the environmental blood pressure that's going to be applied this is just a blood pressure that's flowing that's pretty much on the surface or inside surface of the artery is nine point three three kilopascals and the blood temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So material selection. So for this process, is all the materials that were chosen are biocompatible with the human body. They're chosen for their tensile strengths, um, their flexibility, which was previously stated, and um, their uh, ability to not deteriorate under the human uh, pH and um, kind of stuff like that. So the first material is polytetrafluoroethylene. And this is referred to as PTFE. And um, so these are the materials or these are the material properties that entered into SolidWorks. Um, some of the main or the most important ones are the elastic modulus, uh, mass density, tensile strength and yield strength. So uh, the next material that was selected was polyethylene uh, tetrathalate. And this is known as da or Dacron. Um, and then the next material was polyurethane. So the cost of the materials. So PTFE had an average cost of $6.20 per pound. Uh, the Dacron's cost was around $2.86 per pound. And then the average co or cost of polyurethane is $12.76 per pound. And keep in mind that um, we're using these materials. They're in or the cost of them is in pounds. And uh, what we're actually just making is a tube that's 2.6 millimeters in diameter and one to 100 millimeters in diameter or in length so there's not going to be a whole lot of material used so the cost um, is not all that important um, so this is a simulation for the artery blood flow of one millimeter uh, one millimeter um, since the average flow rate where you assume um, we're going to assume a worst case scenario so this is going to be five times the um, the uh, blood flow rate that was previously stated so when you multiply by five, you get a volumetric flow rate of one times 10 to the negative five millimeters cubed per second. And then that's gonna be on, uh, on one side of the one millimeter um, blood vessel. And on the other side is the environmental pressure, which is 90, or 9,332 Pascals. So from the simulation, we can see that um, the highest pressure is right on the, the surface or the outside surface of where the volumetric flow rate ends, and then it starts to decrease as it, it reaches the environmental pressure. So from the simulation, we're gonna take the maximum pressure of um, 9,386 Pascals, and we can apply this to all the one millimeter materials, um, all the materials, the three different materials to uh, see how they're gonna to react to the pressure. So this is the artery blood flow for the other, the 10 millimeter and 100 millimeter. Um, pretty much the same thing occurs is the, the largest pressure is right at the beginning where the volumetric flow rate enters. And um, so in this table four, the, or the blood pressure simulations, we can see that as uh, um, the length increases, it's gonna experience more pressure, a greater amount of pressure. So in this, this is the PTFE uh, stress and strain diagrams. So um, PTFE has the largest stress at the 10 millimeters um, and the strain decreases um, 
as the length goes up. And this is caused due to the ratio of, of what strain is, which is change in length to original uh, length or to change in original length due to stress. So that is just going to keep on decreasing. So the, the increased length is going to be on the denominator, resulting in a smaller number when divided by the or, or original length change. And so the maximum stress, which was found, is uh, 1.78 kilopascals. And uh, the tensile stress, which was from the, the uh, research, is uh, 7.6 megapascals. So from these numbers, we can see that the PTFE will be able to withstand the um, arterial arteries blood pressure because it was uh, the max stress was not able to overcome the tensile strength. So this is the Dacron stress and strain. And um, again, it has the largest stress at 10 millimeters. Uh, the strain decreases with length. And uh, for this one, our maximum stress was at 1.78 kilopascals. And the tensile strength was found to be uh, 225 megapascals. So the Dacron is going to be able to easily withstand the arterial or arterial's blood pressure. And this is for our final simulation. It was the polyurethane. Uh, again, largest was or the largest value for stress was at the 10 millimeters. The strain is going to continue to decrease with the increased rated size. And then the uh, max stress was found to be at 1.8 kilopascals and tensile strength from the research data was 3.5 gigapascals. So there is a large difference between the max stress and tensile stress. So um, it's going to polyurethane is going to be able to easily withstand the pressures um, undergone by this artery. So the results. So to compute the re uh, re or reliability of each material, a uh, factor of safety can be taken from each simulation. Uh, the factor of safety is going to be equal to the tensile strength divided by max stress. So for uh, PTFE, the factor of safety is 42. Dacron is 1,314. And then polyurethane is the factor of safety is 19,000. So um, the higher the factor of safety is, the more uh, reliable the material will be that it will not break. So we want a, a higher factor of safety for um, materials that are going to be placed in the human body because um, when they break, it's ca catastrophic and can be life-threatening. Life um, so in conclusion, polyurethane was going to be the best material for the um, arterial artery. And um, this, is, uh, this is just for this artery. Um, other arteries could have different materials and that will do better under different stresses. But the polyurethane had the best tensile strength, had a great yield strength, mass density, and it was the most flexible out of the material, which is a key component in this artery. Um, also, uh, something that did set it apart in addition to its flexibility was that it has um, it helps with blood clotting. So um, the structure of polyurethane is similar to the structure of protein. And um, this is going to help with blood clotting, which is important in the human body. Um, the, uh, it, it is the most expensive out of the three materials, but it's $12.73 or 75 cents per pound. And keep in mind, we're using very small amounts for this artery, the construction of this artery. So, and um, as a patient, um, I'm sure a patient would want a more reliable material than a cost effective one that's going to their body and could potentially be life threatening if it does not if it breaks so that's the references and that's it